Hello and welcome to this video about CMMN sentries. I'm Valentin Zickner and I'm going to show you what CMMN sentries are and how you can use them with a global. Therefore, I prepared a global installation and we have here global design, which is the modeling application, the main application where we will work on. And we have global work as well, that is the application in which we can execute uh, business processes and we have Flowable Control, which is an administrative. Now, when we go to Flowable um, Design, our models are typically structured in apps, and therefore we can uh, create our new order app. And in this order app, I am going to create now a new model, and that is my uh, order case. Let's say we create a new order, and then the order case. And uh, in here, we have now the case plan model. That's the middle part of this window where we have the possibility to model our case inside. On the left, we have different um, stencils or shapes which we have available to drag and drop into our case plan model. We can switch here between list and icon view. We can also filter over here. And then on the right, we have the properties for the current selected element. At the top, we have a toolbar for copy and paste, save, and so on. Now, let's take our case and we start with a few human-driven tasks. We also call them human tasks. And say we have one specified data and another task, which is called enter payment details. Now, this uh, we can save. That's the top left button. And then publish. That's the button here. Uh, on the right side, cloud symbol. And then once we press publish, we can go to global work and say in here, new work. And it directly asks us if we would like to create our order case where we then can proceed. Now this case starts both tasks at the same time. And the reason therefore is that they do not have any relation. So it doesn't matter which of both we complete. Once we complete the first one, we only have the second one left. We then can complete the second one and our case is completed. Now, as of now, it was without sentry and we can uh, now define a control flow uh, with a sentry. We could also extract that out to a process, but rather than doing that, we can say once we complete specified data that you see basically here by the trigger complete, um, it is going to start enter payment details. Now with that sentry added, and when I save it and publish it again, uh, we can go ahead and re-execute everything. And we are going to see then that now the first task is specified data. When I complete the first task, I can complete the enter payment details. So we are now forced to do that in a specific order. Assuming that we wouldn't like to always uh, enter the payment data, we can capture here something inside the uh, specified data task. So let's say we are creating data form over here. In that form, I'm saying I have a checkbox and I call that checkbox uh, payment required. And that is now stored in a variable which we also call payment required. I can now go ahead and say for my uh, enter payment details task that I would like to have uh, the condition over here, payment required, that should be equals to true. And only in this case, I would like to start the enter payment details. When I save that now and publish it again and try that out again, we now see when we create a new work item, and we say for specified data that payment is required, that we will get the enter payment details task. And I try to complete that first, then we see that as well. The case is completed here. And when I try that again and say this time we don't require a payment, then we see there's no second task. Let's go to the history here. We don't see that enter payment details is enabled. And with that, we basically do not have the option to complete anything. It also doesn't complete that case since there's one task 
which is still left to do. Now, to go back, we can uh, structure that here in a stage and say that is basically in our draft. And for this draft, we are going to do uh, those two tasks, enter payment details and uh, specify data. And for the stage, but also for the case plan model, you could now say uh, all of that is with autocomplete. So by saying this is autocomplete, we are saying it's not required that you do the enter payment details in case you do not do it, uh, you do not need to do it, uh, that stage will finish as well. Let's try that out. And we see over here, payment required. When we go back to our order case, uh, we see we only have the task. When I complete that, we see now, uh, rather than before, the order case is now complete as well. Let's go ahead and say, um, for example, that we are saying the specified data uh, can be done more than once. So that can be manually activated. And in addition to that, we would like to mark it with repetition. Then uh, we would like to eventually basically say manually once we are done with that stage. So we are no longer using the autocomplete on the stage. We are now introducing a separate way to end this. Now the enter payment details is only done basically the first time. And we now introduce a so-called user event listener, which is basically a button in the Flowberg user interface where we say now um, uh, this is basically finish draft or submit draft, be even better. Once we press that button, uh, we are going to end the draft stage itself. Here we can say uh, that has the uh, exit type complete. So in this case, it will fail uh, whenever we do not have a completable stage. So whenever specify data or enter payment detail is still active. Now the exit sentry is a little bit special compared to the entry sentry since the exit sentry is going to end something while the entry sentry is basically starting something. So whenever we have an exit sentry on something, it will uh, execute that then basically when it's running to terminate it while the entry sentry is there, is preventing it from starting it. Let's try that out. And now we see basically in our order case, we only have two buttons here, specify data and submit draft. And I say specify data, we have to specify data task. I can say uh, just complete. We are back and we have still those two buttons left. Uh, when I do it again, and this time I say payment required, then we see we have the enter payment details and we can complete that as well. Uh, I can do that now as often as I want. The specify data payment required is still here. When I complete it, I do not get that task again since we already have done it. And then eventually I can submit my draft, which will complete the case. Now to make that a little bit more complex, I add uh, one more thing, and that is now a second stage. So also between two different stages, uh, process um, order, it's written between those two different stages, you can uh, use a sentry to basically say, once the first stage completes, then we go ahead and enable the second stage. In here, uh, we have, for example, a task trigger payment, and this trigger payment task, uh, we only would like to do in case uh, we have the payment required. So here we can use a sentry again. And the reason why I'm showing that to you is actually since that sentry now only has uh, the uh, on part and doesn't have, uh, only has the if part and doesn't have the on part. So the complete arrow is missing and we only have that diamond on which we can now say, we have a condition and that condition is payment required is equals to true. Again, here on the stage, we need to set autocomplete. Otherwise the stage will not end uh, in case we do not complete that task. And we can um, do another task here, for example, send data 
uh, which we are always execute. Now let's save that. And then when we publish it, we can look at uh, how that works. So we can go ahead and um, specify here. We have a draft now and we can say we would like to specify the data where we say we require a payment. Uh, we enter the payment details here. Obviously, there you would still need to build out form and we submit the draft and we see we have those two tasks, trigger payment and send data. So let's just complete both of them. Our case is done and I do it again. This time I will say I do not require a payment. So I am just completing the specified data as it is, submit my draft and we see we have in the process order only the send data um, task. Now there's one last thing which I didn't really mention before and you see it here on the on part. Here we have basically the event complete but on others we have the event occur here for example. And Flowable gives you by default a really good pre-selected value when you just uh, connect them the first time. But there you need to be aware of the life cycle of um, your plan items inside your case model. So a task, for example, completes. That means whenever something completes and you are going ahead and executing it. But there are also different event types on which you can react on with sentries. So it's not limited to that simple use case, which I just have shown you. So to summarize it, um, CMMN sentries allow you to start something whenever something is happening, not only based on completion, also based on other event types in CMMN. But in addition to that, they also allow you to end something whenever you would like to end something and then trigger other actions based on that. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, remember to subscribe to our channel and see you next time.